If you can be in a bad mood for no reason, you might as well be in a good mood for no reason. If it's not going to change your life, it shouldn't change your mood. If the cost is peace of mind, don't buy it. Yeah, if you can be in a bad mood for no reason, then you can be in a good mood for no reason. Which means that if you can do something that's amazing and still have a shit day, it means you can do something that sucks and have a good day. Which means the entire excuse around, I don't want to do all these hard things because as a proxy, it makes my mood sad is ridiculous because it means that we are ultimately in control of how we want to perceive the work that we do. And so I think that is ultimately the most freeing thing that you can do in terms of how you can equip yourself to get through those harder periods. Why do you think there's so much cynicism at the moment, especially easier. on the internet? It's easier. You can always defend no. Like we, we actually deal with this a lot and um, we actually have to check ourselves, which is it's always easy to find a reason not to do an investment. So we have a no bias and you should have, I mean, you should overall have a no bias. Like you should say, okay, here's all the things that could go wrong. And you have to kind of think that way because you have to manage risk. But if you say no to everything, you're always right in the short term, but you're, but if you never make an investment, you're wrong in the one way that matters, which is you get no return. And so like you always miss the short term losses, but you lose the big long term gain. And so it's again, this is a, a continuum to be managed more than a problem to be solved. But cynicism is short term. It's like every so when you so, okay, this is so when you go home, right, and you want to start a new business, or you have a girl that you're bringing back. And your friends and your family are like, she's not going to last or like, this isn't going to this isn't going to be forever. They are right literally every single time, except for the one time you bring your wife home. And in that time, they're all wrong. And it's the one time that fucking matters. And so the idea like, but the thing is, is because of the false positives or the true positives, they might have been right literally 19 out of 20 times. And if they were right the first time and the second time and the third time and the fourth time, why would they bet against no on the fifth time or the 50th time? But you only need one yes or one positive to change your entire life. And so there's this habit and that's where cynicism comes from where we get so many positive reinforcers for saying no and being right. But it's only short term being right because you have to make big bets to win big. And that also means that you're wrong plenty of times and people aren't willing to look stupid for being wrong. This school bet could go wrong. I'm betting it's not, but everything has risk and I've been public about it. Right. And so like, if anything, but like I played this out. So like, I, I like, I'll tell you how I played this out. I was like, if it goes wrong, I'll document the things that I, that I learned and then I'll apply next time. And I'll do what I've always done. State the facts and tell the truth. It is strange to think about how being cynical or skeptical or kind of sardonic or cutting or aloof, it's used as a proxy for being smart. Oh, yeah. It, the worst thing that anybody could be accused of is naive. That's what they're trying to optimize right. against. They don't want to be seen as naive. Oh, you oh, fucking, you hope that everything was going to be good. Oh, that's, I mean, that's cute. Like, you know, the world will teach you it'll it, don't worry don't worry it's like it'll it'll you'll learn you'll learn yeah people don't want to be naive and they'll be right and that's what's that's what's painful is that it takes more effort to start in the beginning and more people are right about the fact they're like hey you're not going to hit it big and guess what a month in you're not but they're only measuring on months and at six months you're also not going to have hit it big yet and they're going to be like i'm still fucking right and at a year you're still not going to have hit it big and they'll still be fucking right and every day that you haven't hit it they're going to feel like they were right but they're wrong because they're measuring in days and you're measuring in decades there's this idea from Gwinda called the cynical genius illusion. Cynical people are seen to be smarter, but sizable research suggests they actually tend to be dumber. Cynicism is not a sign of intelligence, but a substitute for it. Mm. A way to shield oneself from betrayal and disappointment without having to actually think. There was a, there was a tweet on um, a, a doomsday money Twitter guy. And he said, uh, yeah, he's predicted uh, 16 out of the last three recessions. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is is that no one no one recalls the other 13 times that guy was wrong 
Yeah. And they don't recall all of the gains that probably were made in the marketplace by people who didn't sell during that time period. There was this uh, broad, you, you know, people forward shit on WhatsApp. And if it's been forwarded lots of times, it even says at the top forwarded many times. It's like a little warning. And this happened, I think, around uh, COVID. There was an image of one guy, one squaddy wearing like army gear walking through the streets of London. And this was forwarded on WhatsApp as evidence that the army was going to come and hold people in the house at gunpoint. And if you left, it was going to be martial law was going to be deployed yeah. on the streets of London. And this went fucking nuclear, completely interstellar, absolutely everywhere. What happened with that? Yeah, right. What happened with what happened with that yeah. thing? Not a single person who decided to spout this half fucking baked opinion that never turned out to be true ever got held to account for right. that. And I must have received that message like five times. Yeah. I'm like, hey, you you don't get to just make these like ridiculous, like actually stupid fucking claims about the world and then no one call you to account. I'm gonna hit on the cynicism point. Um, the world belongs to optimists. Because if you're going to do anything big, you have to believe that it can happen. Otherwise it never will. That Sean Puri thing, the cynics get to be right and the optimists get to be rich. Yeah. They're, like. If you look at it from a percentage of success rate, I've been wrong more times than I've been right. I have failed more times than I've succeeded. But you always succeed more and are right more in the big ways than the people who've been right all along and are wrong. Uh, Trevor says this, my, my editor. He says, 99% uh, right and 100% wrong. So like, they're, they're right 99% of the time. But they're wrong 100% because the only thing that matters is the big one at the end. Like, your family and friends will say that every girl that you ever date is not good enough. Except for the one time you find the girl that you're actually going to marry. And then it doesn't matter. Or like, this won't last. Or like, this business idea, it's not going to work. And you might have nine failures. I felt my first nine businesses didn't really amount to anything. Nine. Nine. As in the first one, spent time, fucking failed. Second one, this one will be different. Fucking failed. Third one, this one, this is the one. And then seven, six more after that, right? I'm just painting this picture because like, it's painful as shit because the whole time everyone is telling you, I told you so, and they're right. Today. But not forever. If the cost is peace of mind, don't buy it. Why? I use the peace of mind as a, as a indicator for breach in values. So that's the, I want to become known rather than, and sacrifice my reputation in order to do so. And so for me, I would lose peace of mind, like right on the edge. I'm like, I don't know, this is a little bit edgy. I had a guy um, who shared a, a bash clip of me. And what's a bash clip? Oh, like somebody like took my clip and then was like, this is wrong. Oh, okay, blah, 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 right, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so I looked at the guy's profile and I saw he was a VC and I was like, huh, okay. I know who this is. Oh. <laughs> and so I DM'd him and I was like, um, do you disagree with this? And, uh, he said something and then I just eviscerated him. Uh, and he was like, you're right. I overstepped because I wanted to try and do a viral clip. You are fundamentally right. And I was wrong. And so like that is what I would never want to be. Like that is disgusting to me. And so the cost of making a viral clip to try and trend jump when I know that fundamentally the thing isn't right is not worth the price. There's a, this shows up in, in other ways. So I had it. What the fuck did I do? I, I think I, tried to throw a used Splendor packet in a bin okay. in a restaurant. You know, okay. like, yeah. did that. But I was leaving. And I was like, it's next to the bin. Someone will get it. Okay. And I walked oh, yeah. 30 yards away. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Turned around, went back, put it in the bin. Yeah. You'd know. That's the peace of mind. Yeah. And you'd know. 